start. Uh, any questions on the Akron game before we get into what the questions are? Nobody wants to talk about Akron. <laughs> well, one of the biggest things you kind of took away from evaluating that tape of Akron, any areas to improve going into next week? Well, I, I thought from a defensive standpoint, it was basically tackle needs to improve. I, I thought there's way too many arm tackles out there. Transition to the tackle needs to improve. And I think our, our deep ball coverage, see the ball, play the ball, Back, you gotta get back to that. We're playing the man too much instead of the ball. That and uh, you know, overall, I, I thought the communication from the sideline was good with the defense. Offensively, it was really just sustaining blocks. You know, sustained blocks. I think we were on the right people. I think we just got to sustain blocks, move our feet, all right? And then again, I, I thought Blake Ball was going out for his first start. Uh, you know, I thought he basically had good fieldmanship in the huddle. Uh, control the huddle, play with poise. You know, we had the one mistake where, you know, you got to understand where you're at. Throw the ball out of bounds. Don't try to take a play if it's not there. Other than that, then, I thought we played everybody on the trip that had a chance to get out there and experience some game speed, and uh, it worked out well from there. I was, I was happy with the kickers. I, I thought the punter did a great job with hang time, getting some things done there. Uh, and, you know, we didn't have a chance to kick a field goal, so I can't talk about that. Uh, but I thought the kickoffs, we covered well. And, again, we got a lot of work to get done individually with some players. But I thought scheme-wise, I thought they did what they were supposed to do from an execution standpoint. Uh, and with that, I love up to Ohio State. <coughs> George, you've always said that you want to take this program to another level. And this is another one of those games which, you know, gives you the opportunity to get some attention. Probably... I mean, if you win this game, it's obviously your biggest win since Georgia. Two parts to that. You agree with that, and also, not only beating Ohio State, but like after Georgia, you didn't follow up. It's necessary to right. win the game and then follow up. You got to sustain. You know, I, I think the big thing is this. You know, I like playing. You know, conference games against you know tradition schools like Ohio State have a great long history of winning. Uh, great tradition as far as the program is concerned, and. You know, we put we go into every game with an opportunity to win it, and that's why I told our players at the beginning of the season was that, you know, we expect to play 14 games this year, and I expect to go in each game with the opportunity to win it. Now we have to perform to get that done, and I think the task this week with Ohio State is that I think they're a very good football team, and and uh, they recruit extremely well. Uh, the, the Urban just taken over by the Jim Trestle. Uh, was no slouch in recruiting. He brought a lot of good players to that program. Uh, again, watch them. I, I think they're a very solid defense. I think they have good athletes. They have good line scrimmage people play uh, and good coverage skills. I think offensively, obviously, they got great athleticism, especially a quarterback on uh, number five. Uh, so we'll have our hands for both sides of the ball. And again, as I told our kids, it's a great challenge. and. You, you go into every game with an opportunity to win, and that, that's exactly what we look at. <coughs> the second game of the season, we have to do the things we have to do, and, and I don't worry as much about Ohio State doing the right things as, as much as we do the right things within our scheme of offense and defense. And, and again, see where that game is into the fourth quarter, and I think that's what you got to look at. But again, we're going to have to tackle better, we're going to have to sustain blocks better, we're going to have to make some chunk plays out there. And again, uh, I'm going to count on our seniors to handle the, the crowd and the noise and all that stuff where we don't travel with a lot of freshmen. So everybody on the, on the travel squad has pretty much been in, in big stadiums. And again, it's, a, it's why you play Division One football to play in games like this. And uh, that's the challenge I'll, I'll pose to the team uh, as far as practice is concerned and, and the game's concerned. Is there anything you can do to replicate on the show team number five, Braxton Miller there, and all of his sort of versatility out there on the field? Well, I took some early snaps. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, we, we moved someone else into that spot. Uh, uh, Drinko Johnson, number five, you know, 6'2", about 215 pounder, uh, athlete that can do things. And uh, he's done a really good job for us, but I don't think he can replicate number five. I think he's an exceptional quarterback that, you know, basically uh, he's, he's everything they talk about at Ohio State. He's a very good player that has a great surrounding cast around him. It's just
just not him. He has great athleticism at wide receiver. He has big running backs that can make, make you know, you can't all tackle those fellows. So, you know, we're going to have our work cut out. But, uh, again, uh, especially if there's no huddle and, and fast tempo stuff that they're doing. Uh, but we're, we're going to line up. You know, we're flying up Friday, and let's check it out. I, I'm looking forward to it. I always look forward to big games like this. And uh, I think the team will, too. But I think you got to. Uh, stable son, but, but I'm more concerned with us doing the right things than they are about Ohio State and what they do. We, we're practicing to get better at what we do. Is there a benefit to playing on Thursday just to have a few days off from practice and the game plan have a little bit more time for that? Yeah, uh, well, obviously, uh, I think it's a benefit to play on Thursdays if you win. If you don't win, there's no benefit because you've got two more days to just sulk and walk around before you get back on the field on Monday. <clears throat> But uh, I like Thursday night games. I used to play a lot of them at another school all the time. And uh, we gave you Friday to catch up with the tape and to keep the kids off Saturday. You get some injuries back, some soreness back, and, and you come back ready to go on Monday. So it, it gives you a chance to jump on the opposing team a little bit as far as scouting report and getting those things done. So it does help you to play on Thursday. As your improved recruiting level, can the getting better athletes kind of helps you be in a better position to compete in a game like this as far as going out to your draft league? Well, I mean, I think, you know, I think the players win big, win, win big games. I, I, I think coaches try to get them in the right spots. But players have to make plays in big games. That's what it's all about. When you go back to all the games that you would consider big games, the good players make big plays. That's why they're better than the other guy and stuff. And likewise, our good players are going to have to play great. And our, our players that are striving to be, that are average, trying to be good, have to play good. It's the same with Ohio State. They got they got some great players. They got good players, but you got to put it all together on the field. And again, it's a game that I, I think is going to be a game of you know it's not the play that was bad. It's the next play that's most important. I think when you play big games, put it to the side and move on to the next play. Your team generally doesn't seem to be afraid of this team in any sense. I mean, they seem to feel like they're capable of playing anybody that they that they meet on the field that they're equal with. And it isn't like they're just talking. It seems like they're being yeah, really I, I would hope they're not talking a lot. But I, I think they're eager to play good competition. I think most competitors are like that. They, you know, I always say you respect everybody, you fear none. And I think that's the motto that I've always had with the team is that, you know, you, you give respect because they said we deserve it. I think they've had a long history of winning, winning championships up there, a uh, great fan base, everything that you would want in a program they have. And, uh, you know, we're still trying to strive to that thing. And I think we have an opportunity to go out and, at least on that football field that day, have an opportunity to go out and show what we can do. And that's the challenge up to with the kids. What can be expected from an Urban Meyer coach team? What can I expect from... And Urban Meyer coach team. Well, I think Urban's been around enough. I I remember playing him back at the Gator Bowl. He was at Notre Dame uh, as an assistant coach when I was a coach of Tech. Uh, but you know, I, I think they're always fairly well drilled. I don't think he's playing with chopped liver. I think he's playing with great athletes out there, and I think he utilizes them very well. I think he gets his good athletes the ball in space and lets them let them do the work. Uh, I think they've always been solid on special teams. And I think he does a lot of those things you need to do to win football games very well, uh, as far as what I've seen. And, but he has, a, he has a, a, a great touch in getting guys that can make plays or beat my checkers better than your checker with the ball in his hand, get the ball in that guy's hand. I think that's what I've noticed, whether he was in Florida or, or his history when he was at Utah or Bowling Green or whatever. There's good players going to have the ball in their hands. Did you guys have any relationship when he was at Florida? Did you forge him? Not really. I, I mean, uh, I know, I know him, but I mean, uh, I mean, no, I don't. I mean, he's, he's a good fellow, I guess, but I, I mean, I, I'm about 20 years older than the guy. I, I wouldn't be hanging around with him. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, you talked about the uh, the uh, trouble tackling on defense, but is there any particular unit on that side of the ball that's really going to have to come up big for you guys to have I a chance? I think they all do. You know, they, 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 I think you challenge them all to be better players. And I, I always talk about gap and a half, not just a gap. That extra half a gap is real important in this game, that you control 
your gap, but you got the other gap either to the inside or the outside of you to make the help on play. I think that's the stress this weekend. Again, they have a big, massive offensive line. We're going to have to basically do a lot of good things on defense, and you can't give up the hidden yardage. That's the big thing in this game. They're running, <clears throat> they're running back runs with authority, and you know I, I think he has a chance to, to get the extra three or four yards. It's, it's, they're going to get some yards. I mean, they're a good football team, but where they get it, you got to stop them. You can't be giving them the hidden yards. That's what concerned me in the last game with Akron. I think there were 90, 90 yards of hidden yards after the first hit. You, know, you can't do that against teams like this. That, you know, that just extends first downs. How's Latavius George? Do you expect him to play? Uh, no, I don't. I, I think he's week to week, but uh, he didn't practice today. In fact, he was just in the helmet. Uh, was didn't even have shoulder pads on, but that would be a week to week deal. But you know, if they don't practice Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't include him in the game plan pretty much. So I don't expect him to play this week. On that note, how, about how valuable is it to have an experienced guy like Brent Harvey and obviously another guy like Storm Johnson? I mean, you're an act of the way. That's how I look at it. I, I think uh, Storm Johnson will get the start and nod, backed up by Brent Harvey. And, uh, Dancing Harry there. Cedric Thompson will come up as the third running back. I mean, he, he, he ran for 210 yards, but only gained 40. <laughs> Coach, how encouraged were you by your uh, turnovers, your special team defense? Right? Well, you know, I thought the special teams got the two. I thought the punter did a good job of hang time, and, you know, I think we came up with a pick, and we should have had two other fumbles on the ground. You got to come up with them, but. Uh, but again, that's the thing we didn't do last year. Turnovers were, were rare. Uh, takeaways, we always called takeaways on defense, turnovers on offense. And, and uh, last year, I thought we were too sloppy ball security-wise on offense as far as protecting that ball. And uh, we had the one with the pick. Uh, and that was strictly the quarterback all the way, just a bad decision. He knows that. And the other ones were uh, two, of the, two of the turnovers led to touchdowns. So I think. You, you, you can't beat turnovers. It's great, uh, you know, as far as momentum is concerned, your sideline's concerned, and we work extremely hard in practice on it, and uh, I'm glad it, it happened, and, you know, uh, because I think it reinforces what we've been teaching. Portals was put in some big moments last year, kind of throwing in some big moments in games, but obviously the biggest stage he's, he's faced as a starting quarterback. How's his debater been this week so far? Well, you know, he, he's had two days of practice, and then, you know, uh, Blake, Blake is a pretty poised guy. You know, that in some sense that's great, in some other sense it's bad. But uh, he doesn't get rattled a lot. You know, I, I think he commands control of the huddle. He commands control of the field. He understands the game plan. And, and the thing I like about Blake right now is that he'll take what the defense gives, but he's not afraid to take a shot down the field. I think that's what, that's what people have to do, and especially in our game, you know, we're, we're basically a 60-40 team, 60% run, 40% pass, but it could be 60% run, 40 pass, based on what the defense has given us. So, but that's basically the philosophy is we're going to, you know, control the line of scrimmage and see if we can run it and go after people, and if not, we have the ability to throw it. I feel more comfortable this year in the drop back end than I have in any year, last year, the year before, I, I think. The reason is I, I think we uh, Boyles has a good arm strength. He can see downfield, and I, I think we have some receivers. You know, we play with six of them that can go out and get the ball. You said you like having this game on the schedule. I guess this was a replacement for Pittsburgh. You initially were supposed to go up there and return a game. Would you look at opportunities like this? Or are you still have the stance where you only want to play a team in a home and home uh, setup? Or no, I only I, I don't think it's fair to our fan base to play. 747 games, you know, I'll pay for the claim. I mean, I'm not into those. I, I think we have a home stadium that's that stream of revenue, and, and basically I'll play anybody one and one. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's the way it should be. Now, if we didn't have our own stadium and all that, it'd be different, but we have our own home stadium that uh, our fans deserve those games at home, and, and I think the stream of revenue has to be there for us to succeed athletically. So again, I mean, I, I'd love to play anybody in the country. I think the home, the non-conference schedule, I always try to get it as a, a schedule that's very competitive. It's hard to get games, though, it really is. Well, I'm struggling trying to get games, you know, with teams that don't want to return the game. They don't want to return. Now, Ohio State, we took over for Cincinnati. 
as an exchange on that one. All right, but I, I jumped at that. I think it's a great opportunity for this program. With the new college football playoff, do you think you're going to be able to schedule better games? Do you think teams are going to schedule well, down and try to get more wins? I think with the power rating and the new playoff, BCS playoff schedule, yeah. I think you got to schedule better non-conference games. you got to schedule power ratings right now. It's going to hurt a lot of the one, the one double A's and, and, the, and the, the lower teams because a lot of these teams that are playing, some, some of the different teams they play are going to have to schedule up. And I think everybody's going to try and do that. And you got a couple one double A games on the schedule for future years. What's your philosophy? Yeah, would you rather not play those, or are those fine? For they were they were put on by someone else other than me. <laughs> I'll leave it like that. But uh, no, I, I I'd much rather. I like I want to play people in state if I can. Uh, like obviously South Florida comes on the schedule, and Miami we had it on the schedule, and you know I'd love to play the other people. I have no problem with that. If I use on the schedule, I think that's great for the state. It's great for the fan bases. How important is it in this game, especially that players don't try to do too much? You know, they do that each guy just does what he's supposed to do, and that, you know. I think I think it goes down to responsibility and accountability. <clears throat> you know, you have, you have a job to do. Just do your job, and don't worry about the guy next to you. I think that's where you start getting yourself in trouble, and let the coaches coach and let the players play. I always tell them, and you know, we don't need. The, I got two coaches on the field. It's the quarterback and the Mike linebacker. All right, they take charge on the field. You know, we're young at Mike, a sophomore there, but Blake has to take charge. He's the quarterback on the field, and uh, let the coaches make the corrections on the sideline. You just worry about your responsibility and you get your job done. Anything else? Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you.